I made this robotic flower interactive sculpture that can respond to hand movements. And in this video, I'll show you how you can build one yourself or just learn something from it. This project took inspiration from Breakfast Studio's kinetic installations and also this kinetic wall by Leba. This sculpture uses Dolu V8 object detection to see our hand sign and ESP32 for controlling six motorized mechanical flowers based on the location of our hand. We will go through the process of annotating data then training our AI model, developing our Python application to detect the hand sign, location, and closest hands. Then, we test our system with a simple Arduino prototype with LEDs to see if our software-hardware integration is working properly. We'll also briefly discuss the hardware design aspect of this build. To make the robotic flower respond to hand gestures, we first needed a dataset of images to teach our AI model what hands look like. This is where RoboFlow comes in. We will start by creating a new project for object detection. We want to have two object classes, open palm and closed fist. Upload videos showing and waving your hand and alternating gestures with slightly different environment and lighting conditions. Ideally, we want to include hands of different people to avoid overfitting. We will use RoboFlow's video to image converter and take one frame for every second. This should give us 60 images for one minute of video. Here, I have 473 images. We will use RoboFlow's auto annotation feature that uses Grounding Dino, which is a game changer for object detection annotation. This zero-shot model uses text prompts to automatically identify and label objects in images without needing predefined classes. Simply input your object descriptions and Grounding Dino generates bounding boxes and labels around it. Here I am experimenting and fine-tuning the model by trying out different text prompts and also adding a decoy class to see if it improves the model. Once we're happy with the model, we can start auto-labeling. Once all the images are fully annotated, we can check the results and make modifications if necessary. Once we are happy, we can start approving the images. Once we have approved all the annotated images, we can split the dataset into training, validation, and testing with the ratio of 70 to 20 to 10. Next, we can add image pre-processing for our annotated data. For now, we'll leave it quite plain with just auto-orient and we will keep the size to 640 by 640. Next, we can expand our dataset using augmentation. We will just use horizontal flip augmentation because our model should work with both left and right hands. But of course, there will never be a situation where the person is upside down. Our dataset is now ready to be used. We can also head over to the analytics tab to learn more about our dataset. Here you can see the annotation heat map and object count by image. Now let's get to the fun part. We can either train our model using RoboFlow or we can bring our dataset and train it using a Google Collab notebook. For our project, we will use Google Collab. And to do so, we will have to copy the snippet and by clicking this button, you will automatically be directed to a YOLO V8 custom training notebook template by RoboFlow, which you can also find on their GitHub page. I've made some modifications to that notebook specifically for our use case today. Before we begin, we should enter our RoboFlow API key. You can find it here. Now let's access some cloud GPU to run our notebook. We will run the NVIDIA SMI command. 
Everything's working properly if you get this output. If not, you can change your hardware accelerator to L4 GPU. Now we can continue running our commands and script one by one. As this is a copy of RoboFlow's template, if you want to learn more, you can watch Piotr Skalski's video on RoboFlow's YouTube channel. I will include the link down below. He will probably do a much better job than me explaining custom training YOLO V8 using this template. So today I'll just explain the key changes I've made for this notebook. This right here is where we paste our copied code snippets so we can use our hand science dataset for training. Next is perhaps the most important part which is training the model. I've made some changes here. Instead of using YOLO V8S for small, we will be using YOLO V8N for nano as the backbone model. We are choosing the smaller parameter model so it can run faster for real-time application and can be deployed on the edge. We will set the training epoch to 30 with 640 image size. Our model is done training in just 6 minutes. Our mean average precision values are all above 0.9 indicating excellent performance. MAP50 uses a single overlap threshold while MAP50 to 95 averages across multiple thresholds for a more comprehensive evaluation. The fine-tuned model weights are saved here. We can now upload the model weights back to our RoboFlow project. So if we now go back to our project page, this purple check mark indicate that we have a trained model weights with the dataset. We can also use RoboFlow's UI to perform tests to see how our model behaves. Now let's zip up everything so we can download our model weights into our local system. Now it's time for developing our Python application. But first we will create a virtual environment for all the dependencies that we need like PyTorch and OpenCV. You can check out the project's GitHub page for more comprehensive step-by-step -step environment setup and also access the Python code there. The Python script captures live video frames using OpenCV then runs inference with our custom YOLO V8 model for hand detection. It moves the crosshair based on the position of the largest detected hand. We also added a 2 times multiplier if the object is a closed fist. This way we can determine which hand is closer to the sculpture. It implements a grid system dividing the frame into 6 sectors. Then sending open or close commands to Arduino based on hand state and the sector it's in. The commands are sent to the Arduino via PySerial serial communication. 
I also tried running our hand science model on NVIDIA Jetson Ori Nano with Tensor RT acceleration. By converting our model to Onyx format, then to a Tensor RT engine, and then deployed on the Jetson. This process optimizes the model for NVIDIA GPUs, significantly improving inference speed, memory usage, and power efficiency on resource limited edge devices. The Arduino code receives and parses commands from the Python script, then controls six of the stepper motors to open and close the flower based on the command it receives. Before we build the sculpture, it's a good idea to see if our hardware and software can integrate properly by building a simple prototype. Here, I'm using six LEDs that can fade on and off to simulate the movement of the sculpture. I'm using Autodesk Fusion 360 for my mechanical designs. Here is an earlier version of my prototype. And here is the current version that we are using for the sculpture. Then we will 3D print all the parts, gather all the electronics and remaining hardware, and finally assemble it to a wooden frame. I'm also designing a breakout board to connect and power all the stepper motors and its drivers to the ASP32S3 development board. 